Hello, so we're going to be solving this homework problem. Um, so let me read it off. So use a second degree polynomial kernel to classify four examples in 2D space distributed in an X or pattern. So the idea is, is that if we want to have a linear perceptron to separate the data, we can't do it. There's no line that separates the data. So the idea is that we use the kernel trick, we increase the dimension of the data, and in this new feature space, somehow it is hopefully linearly separable. That's hard to understand, so let's just you know, push through the problem and see if we can understand. So this is a special mapping where you take each data point and you use this mapping function to get your new feature vector. And this mapping function is defined by this kernel function. And you might be thinking, okay, well, how is that kernel function related to this new feature vector? And it's not too important for this problem how they're related, but basically, if you want a perceptron to classify data, in, in actual practice, you would use the perceptron learning algorithm. And it's an iterative algorithm where in the algorithm, you don't just necessarily in essence you do but you don't use this feature mapping you you really take a look at that kernel function and so that's just where it comes from but it's it's not relevant to this problem okay so the best way to do this is to actually do the mapping so we're going to take this and we're going to expand the table okay here's our new table where this is our old feature vector that wasn't linearly separable and now we're going to map it to this new function to see if everything works out so over here we know that in our new feature vector regardless of the data the first element is always going to be one 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 and the new one it's going to be root two times the first element of x so this is the first element of x so root 2 times negative 1 is negative root 2 and we're just going to fill out the data and so on so this is going to be uh, also negative root 2 this is going to be x1 squared so this is 1 x2 squared is 1 and this is going to be root 2 times negative 1 times negative 1 which is root 2 all right so here's our mapping and the question is is does that mapping work uh, in other words are these new data points in our new feature space, are they linearly separable? Let's take a look. Let's recall the definition of linear separability. So the data set is linearly separable if and only if there exists some W vector, sometimes called a weight vector, such that two conditions hold. One is that W transpose V, which is our new feature vector, is greater than zero if the label corresponding to that V is Y equal to one. And less than zero if the label corresponding is negative one and I guess to be more exact these would have subscripts for each new data point I and this is true for all I so that's our condition so if we want to write this out it would look something like this so uh, our weight vector is some vector w1 through w6 and let's say for i equals 1 let's check these conditions w transpose v1 where this is v1 is equal to w1 minus root 2 w2 minus root 2 w3 plus w4 plus w5 plus root 2 w5 
And so we basically just take these points and there are coefficients in this linear combination. So the label here was a positive one for phi one. So that's this condition, which means that this linear combination needs to be greater than zero. And so now let me fill out the rest of the table. Okay, so the next one here, the label is negative one. So that is this condition. So this linear combination combination needs to be less than zero. Also, I fixed this W6, sorry about that. Okay, so now we get the concept, let's fill out the rest of the table. Okay, just to specify, to be a little more clear, what these conditions are saying is that all the samples corresponding to this label are on one side and all the labels data points corresponding to this label are on the other side. So this is a system of equations. So we can put this in some sort of matrix form. So when we do write it in matrix form to express this system of inequalities, it really only works if all of these inequalities are facing the same way. And how you can flip an inequality is multiply both sides by negative one. So I'm going to multiply this by negative one and this by negative one. So here's our matrix multiplication inequality, or matrix vector multiplication inequality. And uh, just to be clear, so I, I multiplied these two lines by negative one. So if you look up back at our old table, I basically took these two lines and put them in the matrix, but multiplied every element by negative one. So th if this is true, then new data set in the new feature spaces linearly separable. And from linear algebra, we know how many solutions there are by these different properties. So let's recall that this system of equations has infinite solutions for W if and only if these two properties hold. Let's call this matrix A only if and only if A is fat, and in linear algebra fat means more unknowns than equations. And if the rank of A is equal to the rank of A augmented with our zero vector, where this is the zero vector, and that also must be, so I guess it's three conditions really, less than the length of W. So these properties are for a system of equalities, but I've given you a system of inequalities. So let's pretend that, let's show the system of equalities first, and I'm gonna generalize it later to a system of inequalities. The rank of A, uh, if you solve it, you're gonna find that it's four. And if you augment a column of zero, you can imagine that the rank is not gonna change. The zero vector is collinear with every vector ever. So um, it doesn't change the rank. More so though, uh, the resulting augmented matrix is only gonna have four rows. So at most it's gonna be four anyway. And the length of the weight vector is six. So yes, A is fat and yes, this is satisfied. So there are infinite solutions for the equality but are there infinite solutions for the inequality? Well, when we want to show this, one thing we could show instead is replace all the zeros with some super tiny number epsilon, where epsilon is the, we use it to represent the smallest positive number, and we can change this to an equal sign. And so what's that saying is that if we have some A, and we want to know if it's greater than zero. And we're not sure. Instead of proving that it's greater than zero, what if we just prove that A is equal to epsilon? Well, epsilon is certainly greater than zero. So if we can show that epsilon is equal, A is equal to epsilon, then we can certainly show that A is greater than zero. Great. This property becomes that the rank of A 
equals the rank of A augmented with epsilon. All right, so this is still six and this is still four. All right, so here's our augmented matrix. And if you find the rank of this matrix, you're going to find that it's also 4. Um, and that's because, I mean, if you think about it, this is collinear with this, so it's not changing the band of the matrix. This is satisfied, right? So these two equations are satisfied. And what that's saying is that this system of equations let's say the let's call it the epsilon vector has infinite solutions and if this has infinite solutions then this has infinite solutions which means that there's an infinite number of weight vectors that linearly separate the data or in other words yes the data is linearly separable